Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm here with my friend, Lynn Marty. She is a portrait photographer and she focuses on online personal brand photography and visual content strategy for female creatives, entrepreneurs, executives, and industry influencers. So in addition to being a photographer, she is also a savvy integrated marketer and co-founder of Agency Light, a marketing and advertising intelligence firm. Lynn, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was quite an intro. <laughs> I know, right? Whenever someone reads my bio too, I'm just like, wow, I feel so, I feel weird like listening to all the <laughs> no, things I've like, done. Wow, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so background, because like people don't know this about us, but we've actually known each other for a very long time. Long time, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how long it's but over ten years, I feel. Um, because, it is over ten years. <laughs> yeah, because Lynn and I used to work together in the advertising industry, um, but now she is also an entrepreneur, which I'm like, yay! Come over yay. to the dark side. Um, and she is a photographer, and I work with her all the time. And I thought it would be super useful for you guys to hear from a photographer and kind of get the ins and outs of photography from a professional. Yes. So, Lynn, what would your kind of advice be to people who are like, I'm just starting out, is my phone good enough? Um, what would your tips be for them? Yeah, I definitely think, like, I'm not an equipment snob. I think definitely, obviously, when you start paying a photographer, they should have really good equipment. But I say you just start. Just start creating. Um, just, you know, you and I coming from the advertising side and now being on the other side, we know it's all really about the story, the concept behind it, telling the story of you and showing that unique proposition. So I feel like that's the thing that's most important. So just whip out the phone and start taking photos and start creating and start listening to your audience and start learning what works and what you're comfortable talking about and what you're not. That's so great to hear because a lot of people are like, oh, do I need to buy a camera if I want to be a blogger? Um, but I feel like the phone qualities are so good right now that, I mean, I, I feel like 90% of my photos are from my phone. Yeah. It, I, like I said, not an equipment stop at all. Like, like the phones are so good now. Um, you just got to start creating. I mean, of course, there's other things to think about like light and composition and things like that. But you can achieve a lot with a phone. So... That's awesome. So do you have any tips for anyone that like have don't have a creative eye, they're using their phone, maybe they're doing a food photo, what would like the top three things that you would um, kind of have them start thinking about? You talked about lighting. Yeah, so lighting definitely is one of them. Uh, if, you know, photography is all about lighting. I'm not going to get into like all like the technical parts of it, but light is essential for really good photo. So just finding really, really good light. And it doesn't mean being in super bright light. I think most people know that, but I just always want to explain. Don't get in like direct light. It's finding a shaded area that illuminates light for different areas. So being in front of a window, um, going under a tree during a sunny day, finding any corners where you can kind of find shade. I am not against being in direct sunlight. It's just when you're doing portraits, people tend to squint. So unless you're doing like a sunglass shoot or you want to be really creative and put your hands up in front of you and play with the shadows, I recommend starting with like being in the shade where like light is illuminating those areas. Awesome. So um, and, lighting the first one and what would yeah. be the next one? So the second one is definitely composition. Um, we talk a lot in photography around the rule of thirds, but as we know, specifically when you're talking about Instagram, um, the one by one dimensions is very popular. So rule of thirds still applies, but really what you wanna look at is the composition. So kind of where you're placing your items and where you're placing yourself in the image. And what the rule of thirds really means is when you're looking at multiple axes on an image, you want to basically place the main item that you want people to draw their eyes to where they intersect. And so that's kind of the rule of thirds that you really want to kind of pay attention to. The reason why I bring up the one by one is you can put someone dead center and it still looks like an amazing photo. So the third one I would say is look at leading lines because of the one by one dimension. And that's really just looking at where lines in an environment draw you to the main subject. So a perfect example I can use is a road. And if someone's walking down a road, your eyes kind of are drawn in with the lines on the side of the road with the subject in the center. So that's a perfect way to explain it. That's awesome. I always see those road photos and I'm like, I love them. And I think it's I just a natural where your eyes go. Exactly. 
Awesome. And so the third tip that you have for anything on smartphone photography? Oh, yeah, so smartphone photography, definitely set your camera so the grid shows up. So you can show the rule of thirds. And a lot of people, um, obviously portrait, if you have an iPhone, the portrait setting is beautiful. So I would recommend if you're going to do portraits, definitely put it on that setting. But another thing and another good trick with the technology of the phone is if you actually tap it, you could focus the photo, but then if you swipe up or down, it actually changes the exposure. So say you are in a situation where it is dark, tap the photo and you'll see a little sun show up and then basically go up or down depending on how much light you need. That's awesome. A lot of people don't know that that exists. On, yeah, on their... yeah, it's, it's a game changer. <laughs> it is. Well, hopefully you guys try that out. And, um, you know, you could also check out Lynn's Instagram for inspiration. Um, so here's the question I get all the time. They ask me who takes my photos. So what do you think people should do? Let's say they don't have an Instagram husband. What should, what should they do about getting photos where they're in them yeah so i mean there's so many different ways so i'll just go through a few so i think in the beginning find a friend to collaborate with so if you're in the beginning stages of um, building your influence and building content i say just find a friend that's kind of in a similar boat as you and kind of like exchange taking photos for the day i do recommend finding someone that has more of your similar personality so when you are looking at your certain backdrops or certain areas that you want to shoot it makes sense for both of you um, I say that's a good one to um, to start with only because, as we know, and I know you're busy, <laughs> Gwen, um, people tend to get busy as their influence grows, and that doing that with someone else kind of tends to not be realistic um, long term. So then I do recommend as a second step, which you could kind of do with the first step, is get a tripod and really start practicing how to take photos on your own. Um, there are certain things that, of course, are going to be difficult if it's a really crowded environment. Um, setting up a tripod might get toppled over if it's bad weather. But I think that's a good way just to practice with a tripod on your own. And then the third one I would say is then obviously go to then hiring a photographer that's going to cater to your timeline and your needs and kind of be an extension of your team because that's really what it is. But I definitely say find a friend first and start shooting together. Yeah, those are some great tips. I mean, that's what I do as well. I've done collabs with people. I've done the tripod. I've done the ask a stranger and that yeah, works yeah. sometimes, you know, sometimes I have to wait and for five strangers for me to get the yeah. actual photo, especially when I'm traveling, like I don't have anyone with me. I'm scared yeah. to put a tripod with me and I kind of want to just get a quick photo. So then I, I look for people around who are probably tourists as well and ask them to take a photo. But the thing is, you don't know if it's going to to turn out so sometimes exactly. you have to wait and like wait and wait until you find someone that so find takes, actually takes a good, a good <laughs> right <one. laughs> I mean you gotta do what you gotta do right yeah um so speaking <laughs> of cool. hiring a professional photographer so you and I have worked together a lot like you know we uh, know each other's style but when do you think is the time when an influencer should um consider working with a professional photographer i think first and foremost if they're going to get a brand deal i think starting there um obviously if it's a paid brand deal you know you're getting some compensation with it i think that would be really smart to do because especially if you're in the beginning stages you want to have that high quality stuff to then show in your portfolio for future opportunities so i think that's a perfect one i think honestly like if you're just a perfectionist and you do want professional photos and maybe in your area you just can't find someone to collaborate with, it's a good time to kind of start a relationship maybe with a starter photographer, like someone who's not as well established so then you guys can kind of grow together. I always recommend that. But I definitely think when you're starting to see some um, – monetary benefits from what you're doing, you should definitely start um, hiring a photographer and, and pretty much just looking at building a team. And I think a photographer is one of those um, because you do want high quality stuff and you want to make sure you get it right away. Um, especially with some of these brand deals, the turnaround sometimes is very quick. And so you want someone who can make sure you're going to get the image that you need in high quality and send it to you as soon as possible. That's so true because um, I think that 
some people are worried about the cost of hiring a photographer because like they think about like, oh, the cost of a wedding photographer and an event photographer yeah. could be hundreds and thousands. So like in the beginning, you know, maybe they're collabing with photographers, like you said, maybe finding someone who's a starter photographer. So how do you think someone like that's just, you know, building their Instagram and their blog, how would they go about finding a starter photographer or approaching someone for a photography collab? Yeah, so I mean, Instagram is a great way. If you find photos that you really like of um, certain influencers, definitely tap and see who the photographers that they work with. I think there's always, I just want to caveat, I think there's always a hesitation where people think that they can't afford the photographer if they see them working with a very, like, high influencer with like a huge following but for the most part photographers we don't like change our rate for someone who has like 100k following and someone who has like 500k following like the rate is pretty much the same so don't get intimidated by that if it's someone that you like and you like their style don't be shy and just reach out because you never know you might have an aesthetic that they've been looking to shoot and they'll be willing to work with you so that's first and foremost just look at people that you really like in their photos Find out who the photographer is and just reach out through DM or send an email. Even better if they have an email listed for their business account on their own individual Instagram handle. Um, another great way is LinkedIn. I know it seems like something that's like really old and like people really don't go there for like photographers, but it's really easy to search for photographers because you can filter out your city and location. And you can also use keywords if you're looking for a personal brand photographer or a lifestyle photographer or beauty photographer. So I feel like that's a great way to um, find photographers. And then of course, there's so many apps to find <laughs> photographers. Um, you know, we have Fiverr, we have Ographer, we have Thumbtack. So there's just so many ways. But I would say start with Instagram because it's a great way to see their portfolio and their type of work. Um, and then you can go visit their website to kind of see if they have their services listed. Yeah, that's just another reason to love Instagram, right? I mean, because yes. that's where, yes. you know, influencers can network with each other, bloggers, photographers, any type yes. of creatives. And I feel like a lot of photographers are also open to TFP shoots. And like if the model is an influencer or maybe you have brands that you're working with and everybody amplifies it and yep. posts it and tags everyone, then eventually it, it's good for everyone to grow with each other's audience. So there exactly. are some, I mean, there's some places that I've done that as well. And, you know, it's more of a collaborative creative project rather than yep. like a paid shoot. Exactly. Exactly. I think what's great about Instagram is like, we are really like a family, you know, like once you like photograph someone and they're like a friend and like everybody just ends up being really close with each other. So I don't know. I love Instagram. I know there's a lot of things that we have to be careful with just with you know, image of being real and things like that. But I think if you use it the right way, it's a great way to build a community. And you'll realize, like, I was at another shoot the other day and I found two of my other photographer friends there. I didn't even know they were going to be there. So <laughs> it's just really nice. You really realize it. it. It ends up being like a true in real life family. Right. And I feel like there's even like some meetups where people go <laughs> and then people bring their phones and they all do shoots together. Yeah. Exactly. I did those in the beginning, too. Like, I'd be like, hey, I'm going to be here. Anybody want to show up and just take a bunch of photos and then people meet each other through the way. So the meetups are great. Yeah. And you tag each other and mention each other and people find exactly. other people through you. And it's just like a great way to kind of um, work together and everybody benefits from it. So I love that. Um, so for anyone that is curious about like a cost of hiring a professional photographer mm -hmm. for like, let's say a lifestyle shoot or a brand shoot, what is the range of cost for a professional photographer? In yeah. Space? So they actually, do range a lot um, I know that's like everybody hates that answer but um, it varies um, I just want to caveat there is a growing need now for just because the environment is changing me and Gwen know this like um, the marketplace is just so much more digital so a lot of photographers in the past, we call it IPS, so it's in-person sales. So it's, okay, you're going to have a sitting fee and sit with me for this certain amount, and then based on per image, we would charge you per image, right? So getting the full digital file was kind of considered like taboo. That's actually changing now just because so much is online and it's so much of it is digital. So I'm just going to talk about more of like photographers on my end where we create content and we work with content creators that mostly use their stuff online, if that makes sense. Um, so with that, um, a lot of them might do an hourly rate, or they have a huge, pa or they have like a, a, a package deal. So the hourly rate really can go from like fifty dollars 
to like $500 an hour, depending on their experience, depending on the need. Um, other photographers might do an hourly rate and then give you a certain amount of images. And then if you want additional images in, it might be like $10 per image. So I would say from like 50 to 500 uh, is a range like for an hourly rate. And then you can sometimes get like a day rate of like 1500 to 3000 if you want like a full on shoe. So that's kind of like the range that I would say. Um, and then some of them have minimums. Um, some of them will show up just for an hour for the $50. Some will say it's $50, but it's a minimum of two hours. So it would be a $100 transaction. So it really just varies. But I would say you're safe to say if you want to start with like a novice or like someone in the beginning to be like in the $50 or $75 range an hour. Right. And I feel like I think that's such a good thing to invest in, especially since you're going to get so many photos in an hour. Like me and Lynn talk yeah. about this all the time. All you the think time. an hour is not a lot of photos. That's like, a, that could be a thousand photos in one hour. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. And it's just being smart about your time too. Like if you really want to build content, like really think about it in advance and how many outfits do you want? Like when changes fast, you guys, like she can change into like 30 outfits, like in an hour. So it's really just trying to maximize your time as much as possible. So yeah, I mean, it, I like to use the word investment because it really is an investment. And I'm not saying it's just because I'm a photographer, but even Gwen knows when you work with a professional photographer, people notice. And I hear it all the time. Like, and I look at the metrics too, because I like to know what the analytics look like. I'll look at the analytics on certain posts versus other posts of the work I've done. And you do see sometimes higher engagement just because it's two creative minds coming together. And I think that's very, very powerful too. Right. And it's not just for that specific photo. I feel like in one shoot, you can have different locations, different outfits. You know, maybe you got a bunch of collabs and you do it all at one time. You do it once a month. And then also mm -hmm. like if you're changing up the images on your blog or on your Facebook header or things like that, your headshot on LinkedIn, there's like exactly. so many places. And then because I post um, photos from like a long time ago, I'm still using some of the stuff that me and Lynn used like two yes. Christmases ago because I just need Christmas content. So I feel like, you know, you yes. can really spread out the usage and it's not just like, oh, I'm going to pay $200 and then, you know, I'll have only content for like two weeks. No, it's like yeah, years. No. Yeah. And I always advise everyone too, if you're going to work with a photographer, they should be thinking about that too. I don't know if it's just me because like, I'm a marketer at heart too. So I always just like my first question every time I work with someone is like, what are these photos going to be used for? Because most people will come to me be like Instagram, but it's like, well, what about your blog posts? Are you going to be on a podcast? And you need a headshot or like, are you going to be building like your own e-course? Because, you know, so many people, once you build a really strong influence, you start branching off to other revenue streams outside of brand deals or in addition to brand deals. And so it's just really important to understand kind of like the total ecosystem and how you're going to use your photos. Yeah, that is so true. And um, so something that I wanted to share with everyone, um, if you are starting to think about hiring a professional photographer, maybe you're starting to get paid brand deals and you're wondering like, oh, but am I paying for it out of pocket? So one thing that me and Linda did a while back when I had a brand deal with a company is I actually asked the, the brand if they want professional photography or iPhone photography. And mm -hmm. they wanted the professional photography because they wanted uh, to use the photos on their own website site and their own Instagram and so I said well I can I have a professional photographer that I love to work with and I actually worked Linda's rate into the deal so that's mm -hmm. an option for you guys so you're not the one shouldering the cost exactly um, a brand actually I think is would are is willing to add that price to the brand um, the fee that they're gonna pay you that way they can have access to it and they can have the professional photography for another campaign and they could use it over and over again yes yeah I feel like that's so smart and I do feel like because it is kind of like the new commercial photographer right it's influencer marketing is so huge right now it's not going to go away it's only going to continue to grow so I think a lot of marketers and brands are getting savvy to it as well so I appreciate you saying that Gwen because that's absolutely true you don't have to cover the cost it's always good just to ask the brand if it's something they're willing to do if it's something that they want Right, because sometimes what um, influencers um, are not aware of, especially if you're just starting out, is that they're actually getting such a good deal when they hire an influencer, right? Because yes. instead of hiring a production company or an agency to do a whole shoot, to hire two photographers, to hire a stylist, a makeup artist, a camera person, 
uh, an influencer, you get the entire package. So we're yes. severely underpaid for that because we do the creative direction, we do the production, yes. we do our own hair, we do our own makeup. Sometimes we get it done. We have our nails. Like if you're holding a product, your nails have to be done, right? So yep. it's like who's <laughs> who's paying for that manicure? Um, yep. And then your outfit, your clothes. It's like it's a whole production, and it falls on the influencer. And some influencers are, are getting paid one hundred dollars per post. When if yeah. they had gone to an agency, it would have been a five thousand dollars shoot. So yep. that that's one way for you guys to justify why you're charging a certain rate is because you are the production, you're hiring a camera person, you're doing the editing and all that stuff, the styling, yes. all the things that come with it. Concepting, so, even the concepts, like that's like a big one right there. I absolutely agree. I know because um, just coming from the industry and you as well, it's like people say, oh, it's kind of like working with a celebrity. I'm like, no, because I work with celebrities. They just show up, but then you have to hire the photographer, the production, the lady does the makeup and the stylist, celebrity shows up. And they just go home, you know what I mean? Like, and you run the scripts by them, but when you're an influence, it's like you have to create the concept, you have to get ready, like you have to do everything. And so I absolutely agree with you. So it is a deal, and I think that's why it's growing, but I totally agree with you, Gwen. It's like champion like your worth and, and ask for it if it's what you want. So Yeah, totally. And not just that, but like in addition to that, they're getting in front of your audience that you're building and engaging with every single day. So you really have to factor that into your rate. And so when people don't understand that that's what they're paying for, that's why they're offering you a free t-shirt, you know, because they think that that's worth all of that that you're going to do, hiring someone, shooting, writing the blog post and all of that. So think about that um, as you, you know, grow your audience and grow your following and start working with brands. Um, so speaking of like setting up the shoot and producing, Lynn, I know you're a marketer and advertiser and you do some of that, but with influencers who are working with photographers, is that a usual thing that the, the photographer works with them or does that fall on the influencer? What is that production kind of like figuring out the location and stuff? How does that look like for you? Oh, okay. Like working with the influencer when there's a brand deal. Yeah, or um, just like setting up a shoot. Like, let's say I'm like, I have a ton of fat, uh, fitness outfits. Uh, let's go shoot. Like, what are the next steps for that? Yeah, so I think for me, I do work with so many like content creators. Uh, but I just, on myself, I just assume I have to figure out the location and everything in advance on myself. So I go in with that mentality. And then obviously, based on the client needs, they might already have an area that maybe they already pitched to the brand. So we're already going to automatically shoot there. If it's clothing, we already know what the clothing they're going to wear. But overall, I go in with the understanding that I'm going to have to scout the location. We're going to have to talk about the wardrobe and then talk about the poses and how many images we need. And then I'll let the influencer guide me if things are already like firmed up at that point. But if not, then I'll put that responsibility on myself. So if someone reaches out to me saying they have a brand deal for the workout outfits, I'd be like, okay, well, give them this time. I'll scout a location, um, you know, whether it's the beach or like a fun street or maybe like at a workout studio if the influencer or myself has a relationship with them. Um, so then I scout the area, make sure what time we're going to shoot. Is the light going to be good? Um, if they do want to do the beach, is there like a volleyball tournament? So I always look to make sure there's not going to be heavy traffic. And if there is, we kind of prepare ourselves for that in advance. Um, another thing that I always like to check too is depending on what the campaign is, certain brands don't like if flash is used and some prefer flash or they want it to look natural. And so I always ask influencer too is kind of like, what is the aesthetic of the image that we need to make sure like if I bring lighting, if it's something that's going to be needed for that particular brand deal. So just thinking about the equipment that I need to bring, um, I'll then determine if I need to bring a photography assistant. Um, I didn't have a photography assistant in the beginning, but now I do have photography assistants that come with me if needed. So just um, wondering if we're in a situation where we really need an assistant, so then I'll secure my assistant for the day. Um, and then when we do the shoot, uh, we will have um, a layout, like a visual shot list of what we want to achieve, but then we always have time to freestyle based on the environment and uh, to allow ourselves to get creative. So that's kind of how I prep in advance for the shoot. Right. So when Lynn and I work together, you know, I usually have an idea because I do a lot of the concepting. Yep. But then I, what I love about Lynn is like she's very 
Um, she knows my creative eye as well. And, and having a relationship with a photographer, you get comfortable and you guys know what each other likes, right? Mm-hmm. And so she knows kind of like my you style. You got the poses down. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of poses, this is a huge question I get all the time because people are like, what do I do? Do I just stand there? Like I look like the same in each photo. So what are the tips you have for posing um, when influencers are taking photos? Yeah, so first and foremost, you want to look like yourself. So I always say that. So um, I always go off the adjectives like, like, are you like more sexy? Are you more fun, outgoing, bubbly, goofy? Everybody has like their own kind of personality. So I would say first focus on that. And then secondly, there are tricks to the way you pose. So a perfect example is like if you want to laugh, when you laugh, you naturally go back and then you see a lot of your neck. You actually don't when you do the fake laugh is you kind of go forward and you tilt your head to the side a little bit and then you kind of laugh. So it's just like certain things like that. Um, if you want to look slimmer, you want to create an S shape in your body. So it's really just kind of turning yourself a little bit more, um, hugging your waist. A lot of people, when they put their arms to the side, they actually put it on their hip. I always tell people, put it on your torso, like bring it to your side and really bend and create some space between your arms and your torso. So that really makes you look a little bit leaner or curvier. Um, If you have really broad shoulders, it's really smart to drop one shoulder so they're not just like this. So there's just so many ways. Um, But when you work with a photographer, I always say when it's your first time working with them, really ask them why they're posing you those positions. I automatically just tell people why I'm doing it, but if they're posing you a certain way, ask why. Like if you were posed in a certain way and they made you move, ask why they made you move so you can get an understanding so that when you need to recreate them on your own, um, it's doable. Because I always say like, like even working with Gwen, like we do professional shoots and then she does stuff with her phone and then she has her like husband, her Instagram husband. So it's kind of good to know that like when you're investing in a photographer, kind of understand their eye and learn that as well so you can recreate it when you're on your own. So that's what I would just say is create triangles, create spaces and twist. That's awesome. I love working with Lynn because she tells me exactly what to do. <laughs> so for those of you who need direction. But I Lynn, tell you why. I'm like, I'm just having you move here because like some people get scared. Of, like, do I look bad? It's like, no, there's a person in the back or like a pole looks like it's coming out of your neck and we have to like move you. So I think communication is key. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I actually prefer that style of working with a photographer. Linda's very verbal. She tells you, verbal. you know, she gives you feedback and I'm just like, it's perfect. It's perfect. And it makes me feel good when she says like, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then she tells you like what it's to funny. do with your hands and stuff. So it's not just like hanging. And then she always notices when I'm stiff, like your hand is just like that. And she's like, relax your hand, relax your hand, relax your hand. Dead hands, dead hands. (laughs) Um, So it's really important, I feel like, as you're growing to find photographers that you love to work with, that you're comfortable with, because you don't want to be rigid and weird and awkward. It's going to come off in the photos. Um, And really think about it as an investment, because it is something that you're going to use over and over again and in other platforms, not just Instagram. Like, you always are going to need more creative assets as you go through this. And then again, brands want the professional photography so that they could use it too. Right. Yep. yep. It's, it's not going away. And then again, like it's an add on to your services, um, and to your rates that you are using professional photography. Um, so any other tips that you have Linda for any influencers that are just starting out, Um, and maybe are like a little intimidated by a professional photographer or working with a, you know, or maybe they're just like, I I don't have an eye. What would be something that they could start to, um, or start doing to kind of develop that? Well, that's a good one. Um, you know, I think you just have to go out and try it because, you know, I've heard people do tips like practice in front of a mirror, which I think is essential you should practice in front of the mirror and like look at yourself but I think you're never really going to know until you just get in front of one so I would always just say like um, maybe don't do it when it's a big brand deal I say if you can invest in it now find someone that you could just go have fun with without the pressure of delivering anything and just see how comfortable you are working with that person Um, try to find a reason like if it's your own individual content they're going to create but treat it like if you were doing a brand deal and kind of just 
you know, do like a test run. Um, because I honestly think like, I still get nervous every time I work with like a new client too, because I'm like, how are they going to be? Are they going to like, because you know, as a creative, my creative is on display 100% of the time. So everybody gets nervous. So everybody's human. But I think the best thing is just, you just have to try it. You just have to go out there and do it. Yeah, and so for me, I also, when I'm on Instagram and I see something really cool that I would want to recreate, I save it. And so I have a bunch of saved photos that I'm like, oh my God, like it's so basic, but it's not something that I I, I forget or I think about. Like, oh, like the walking photo is really cool. Or maybe like holding a purse this way or holding a hat this way and like using props. Um, Sometimes when you're, you know, in the moment, you forget, like there's there's different options. And so it's kind of like... You can use Pinterest too, right? Like uh, pinning shots that you like. Um, Sometimes I see like people using a stool a really cute way or like sitting in a chair a certain way. And so I like to save those for inspiration because if I'm used to like doing the same damn pose, which I do a lot. (laughs) They work though. They look different. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But sometimes I want to try something new. So I would, you know, you know, save and get some inspiration on Pinterest and Instagram. Yeah, I, I did. Okay, now I get it. Yeah, I definitely recommend saving photos. Um, photographers will always ask for a sample or be like, what? It, especially if you don't have a lot of content to refer to if you're just starting out, I always ask someone, like, what are, like, four Instagram handles that really inspire you? Or do you have, like, a Pinterest board that you can share with me? So I think definitely saving photos. I would also say as you're saving the photos, um, think about like the people in the images, um, the color of their skin, the color of their hair. Because a lot of times, sometimes we like images because the color. And it could be like a blonde girl against like a pop of pink and you expect it to look the same, but it might look different if you're a brunette. So maybe to get that same effect, um, the photographer would suggest to put you in front of yellow. I'm not by any means saying brunette will look good in front of pink. I'm just using it as an example is, is try to find some similarities to see if you can recreate it based on your aesthetic and the way that you look. Because I think that's really, really important as well. Um, because that kind of sets you up when you're working with your photographer to get an understanding of what you guys want to create together. That's awesome. So thank you so much for joining us, Lynn. I will put her links uh, on this video and in the notes. And if you want to check her out on Instagram, it's Lynn underscore Marty. And if you are in LA or in the LA area, Lynn travels a lot too. um, Maybe you'll be able to work with her. I work with her a lot and I highly, highly recommend her, especially if you want someone to help you with posing and all that stuff. She's a pro. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.